First in this programme, we're focusing on the world of payments, which has been witnessed dramatic changes over the past 10 years, dramatic changes even, uh, and even greater transformation is expected in the decade ahead. New players have been made the most of traditional incumbents' limitations by leveraging deregulation and technological progress to grab market share and reshape the industry. Well, as a result, while the traditional organisations are often still ultimately pushing payments through clearing systems, they're gradually losing ground. Santander believes that in this context, the best approach is to concentrate its payment assets, talent and development efforts in a separate vehicle called Pagonext. Now, this will provide payment services to Santander banks as well as directly to market with its proposition to corporates, financial intermediaries and non-bank financial institutions. And we are delighted to welcome Fernando Lardis, General Manager of Pagonex Trade, to Cybos TV. Good afternoon, or perhaps good evening, where, where you are, I believe. Uh, if I might start, Fernando, by asking what does Santander believe this Pagonex approach is the right approach to face the challenges in the payment space? Um, hello, good afternoon. Um, we believe it's the right approach, at least uh, for Santander given our context, not necessarily uh, a general recipe for, for every player, but it does fit our context. Um, the assets that we have um, in, in payments uh, area, both in, in acquiring with, with strong platforms in several geographies, as well as access to clearing systems in several geographies, putting that together uh, and detaching it from the general structure of, of the Santander group. Uh, to, to infuse a certain greenfield dose into the strategy, um, to detach a little bit from, from the legacy st systems that are often, very often, uh, questionnaire as a, as a burden, and, and to be able to infuse a fintech uh, mentality in the project, um, we believe is uh, the, the best balance to, to address these challenges and capture the opportunities. And Fernando, within this context, there's always going to be a question about whether a large bank can generate or adopt the approach of a fintech. So do you think it'll be able to compete with big techs or successful fintechs? They're springing up all the time and, of course, innovation or new innovation is a thing that drives them. Well, we definitely hope so. Uh, <laughs> um, it, is, it is a challenge because while we all agree that... Um, they are successful and they have uh, they have proven all these players, both fintechs and, and, and big techs um, models that have been very successful with creating inroads in different areas in the payment space because of they have uh, certain cultural elements, speed, um, agility, etc. cetera. Um, creating that from inside the organization of a as, a, as an example, a traditional institution for many years conducting banking might be might be a challenge. If and that's why we think it is to it needs to be detached somehow to make to make the right the right mix. But we think that um, it can be done and it must be done this way. If if you want to have the the speed of reaction, the the innovative the innovation into your work the capability to attract talent, uh, it has to adopt some of these elements of big techs or fintechs to be able to compete successfully. Now, most banks uh, shout from the rooftops that their payments are a core element in their strategy. But how would you assess banks' performance and success so far with respect to the challenges in this space? I think it's fair to say that we've not been the, the leaders in this process in the last years. Uh, there's many names that will come to all our minds in, in different spaces, in the front part of facing customers, in the railways area, uh, in acquiring and merchant, many big names of the payment industry. If you pick up the largest list, I think, I, I believe that if you pick up the, the, the 10 top now, there's one bank, Visa and MasterCard that could be considered as traditional players, but the rest are newcomers. Uh, so that shows that um, there's been an important push from these uh, new players. Probably a slightly cheeky question to ask, Fernando, but when you take the overview, are banks doomed in the payment space? I mean, how can they maintain their position as the dominant provider, provider of payment services, given 
the competition that surrounds them, notably from the fintechs? Mm. Payment space is very big. And I think there are several domains that maybe they can defend better, uh, in particular domestic payments. Uh, in the international payments area, um, there's, there's major change. Uh, and there are major names that are making very dynamic uh, environment and, and important changes. Um, it's, it's, it's not that they are doomed, but um, it, it, is, it is very challenging. Um, unless you have certain scale, it's very difficult to compete with the massive investment in, in payment systems and upgrade and evolution that some of these players are doing. Uh, so again, another variable would be what is the size of this uh, original player or, or, or banks. Definitely very, very, very challenging. In some areas, probably in the consumer, the individual side uh, with names like Apple and, and Google's and, and Facebook and WhatsApp, et cetera, coming into, the play, into, into place, it looks really, really difficult for certain things. Probably the B2B space and international where there's a lot of complication related to compliance and sort of surface, they might, they might have a better chance. You touched on compliance there. It's often pointed out as a key element to be addressed if new, better international payment solutions are to be developed. Uh, SWIFT is involved in some initiatives in this respect. But what is your view? Uh, how do you see this evolving? It's difficult to predict. It's, this is something that we've been struggling for years, uh, as in my previous life in, in, trans in traditional transaction banking in, 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 a, in a large bank. This was a major issue. We're working on it. SWIFT is leading important initiatives. Um, it is, and it's definitely one of the most critical elements that determine, particularly in the international space, how this can evolve. We have very different regulatory requirements. Payment transparency is understood differently in different geographies. In some places, you are required the address of the of the beneficiary, or in some others, not not uh, uh, the, the not having an homogeneous space. And it's very difficult to have homogeneous space with different regulators. It's a it's a burden. It's a complication. Some some players are, are striving to provide a solution, but it is definitely something where an orchestrated. Uh, are orchestrated from the industry or led by certain strong reference regulators would be very much appreciated. And, and, and Fernando, what's the position of Santanto Pago next in respect to cryptocurrencies? Uh, of course. <laughs> how, how come? No, can't, can't talk about payments. Really, can we? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, the, how many years have we been talking already about uh, distributed ledger technology and 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 crypto? solutions and uh, not, not to sound negative, but it's something that is there that, that we know is gonna come, but it hasn't quite happened. Um, definitely, I think for most of the relevant experts, you would, they would, they would um, call out options like Bitcoin for certain connotations, but definitely CBDC, stable coins and CBDCs, it seemed that they will have, uh, they will they will play a role, and and the, the the leading players in payments are all experimenting with it and and doing initial inroads. Uh, some central banks are taking very uh, forward positions, showing the path to, to to the rest. Definitely, it will be here. I think definitely it will happen uh, for certain uses. I remember when we were talking about micropayments because it will be more efficient, and, and that that probably is being left left aside for the moment. But it will be a, a relevant uh, element into the picture in, say, five years. It's, it's fair to say that, that that's a likely scenario. And if I can ask you to look into your crystal ball a little further, uh, Fernando, and give us your view on the payment space in a few years' time. How do you imagine the landscape evolving? That's a very easy question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, let, me, let me say something. I think. Payments space is so complicated. I don't think, uh, there's going to be concentration in major players, uh, uh, like th there is already. But look at how many different players there are. Um, and, and there will be a part of that will subsist. Uh, there's a local dimension in payments. Uh, regional players will be established and they will, and, they, and they will stay there because to talk to Asia or to talk to Africa or to, or to send payments into Latin America, there, there's, there's different elements that the initial 
the national dominant players in every region will establish, they will interoperate. Uh, so there will be definitely massive change, enormous uh, concentration, uh, subscale providers will, will disappear. disappear. Uh, the innovation is not easy to keep up, but um, it will not be a absolutely dominated by by few names, as in other in other digital areas in which there is a winner takes it all. It's just too much of a local. In my view, there's too much of a local component in payments, not to have uh, sufficient ample space of players specializing in different elements, either in the in the in the operational model or in the value chain or in the regional component or uh, angle of, uh, of the payment systems. OK, well, an interesting prediction and a fascinating note on which to end the conversation. But Fernando Lades, General Manager of Pago Next Trade, thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV and enjoy Cybos 2021.